Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Up The Posh. I'm Kev and I am just about recovered from my first ever live com in yesterday's episode. Um, it was ridiculous. After six years of podcasting, over six years of podcasting, loads of live shows, we did a 24 hour live podcast, commentating on a football manager game, comfortably the most difficult thing I've ever had to do with a microphone in front of me and um, I promise you I will get better at that side of things. I've got another live com coming up today. Um, I don't have much to recap before we get to it. Um, it's the second league game of the season away to Sheffield United who were early season uh, favourites to go up although they did lose their first game 2-0 and are currently in the relegation zone so hopefully we can keep them there. Um, I do want to quickly just look at the uh, the Capital One Cup game that I played in midweek. Um, we were away to Dagenham and Redbridge, so obviously weaker opposition. I weakened the team slightly as well. Um, I kept Ben Anik in goal. I was tempted to bring uh, Gazaniga in and give him a game, but in the end wanted to make Anik captain um, just because there wasn't really anyone else after I dropped Zakwani or rested Zakwani who was experienced or old enough to take the captain's armband so Anik stayed in goal and um, I brought Smith and Chickson in as cover at the fullbacks because I don't want to risk either of my two first choice fullbacks and as I mentioned before rested Gabby Zakwani um, and brought Alex Davy in for his first game um, in midfield I just dropped Anderson and brought Doyle in um, just to give Doyle a try and give try and rest Anderson's young legs um, John Taylor dropped down to the bench and Marcus Madison came in on the right hand side um, and got three assists. Um, Butyman came in for Washington and um, I also chose to rest Lee Angol and gave Kieran Sadley a, a first start um, or first appearance for the club. Um, and we started really well. Um, Harry Butyman got a penalty after two minutes. Sadlier then scored after eight. Um, and then it all sort of quietened down. Sadlier picked up a bit of a knock. And at half time, I had to bring Joe Gormley on for Sadlier to play up front, even though I've been trying to retrain him as a left winger. Um, and any real life posh fans out there, I just want to show you Gormley's goal that he scored four minutes into his debut. How different would Joe Gormley's Peterborough United career have turned out if this had happened to him four minutes into his real life debut? Because if we look, if we look at this goal, this is exactly what this lad needed. Um, it's a shame it's not giving us the 3D replay actually, but basically you can see on there, it's just sort of, he's kicked it one way across the goal and it's hit a defender and spooned back across the other side. It's a shame I can't put a slow motion on there. I could run it again, but I'm sure you're not that interested. But um, yeah, it would have, um, it's exactly what the lad needs in real life. Um, and then it just all got a bit silly from then on. John Taylor came on and picked up his second goal in two games. Harry Butterman got another one. We did concede one a little bit late on, which was a little bit disappointing, but I'm happy that everyone got a bit of a run out. I've pretty much played everyone I intend to play at any point throughout the season now. Injuries, <laughs> injuries uh, barring, of course, apart from Gazaniga, who will get a game at some point. Um, and we've actually drawn Everton in the next round of the Capital One Cup now. So it changes my plan slightly for what the next episode would be. Because I was planning on playing offline all the way through to the Millwall game at home um, for a live com. But I think what I'll probably do now is live com the Everton game. And then probably still do the Millwall one as well. That might be one episode or two. We'll see how that pans out. But we'll have a couple of league games after the Sheffield United game. And then I've got a show Everton. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there. But let's get into today's game. I've waffled enough already. So we're away to Sheffield United. Um, I need to obviously bring my first team players back in again because we've still got our Capital One team on the go. So I need, um, where are we? I want Stephen Darby back in at right back and Cosy and Clay back in at left back. Oh no, Cosy's away on international duty. Why didn't I plan for that? See, this is why. We needed a decent reserve in Adam Chickson. It's a bit of a shame he's having to play in such a big game. Um, but I'm glad I gave him a, a run out in midweek now. Um, we need to bring Gabby Zakwani back in as well. Unless he's on international duty. No, he's still around. Um, I'm actually going to bring him in for Brisley purely because there's just not much between Brisley and Davey. And Davey's just slightly fitter after Brisley's played two games. Well, this would be his third game in a week. So we'll drop Brisley down to the bench. Um... Gardner and Doyle. Do I bring Anderson in? I want to really. He's fitter. I'm not. Sure. I'm almost tempted to bring him in for Gardner. I think I will bring him in for Gardner for this game, just because Doyle 
offers that little bit more defensively. Gardner hasn't been particularly effective in those first two games. Um, so we'll try Anderson and Doyle together as a third different midfield combination in three games. Um, I'm going to bring Taylor back in just because he's got two goals in two games. We can't not play him. Bring Connor Washington in back in as well, even though Harry Buterman got two goals in the last game. We'll leave Forrester there for now, although Madison is really pushing for a starting place after his three assists in midweek. And then we'll bring Angle back in up front. I'm just going to clear that bench because it's all getting a bit confused down there and ask my assistant manager to pick my bench for me because I'm lazy. And we will start this match off. So, here we go. Uh, Sheffield United are favourites, obviously. We're away to them. They're favourites to go up. They should batter us, really. Um, yes, it would have been nice to have Cozy and Clay. I thought he was going to be there, but we'll just have to see how Chickson gets on. Um, I see they're lining up same a similar formation to us. We've got to keep an eye out for him and him. Oh, this is a this is a good team for League One. How did they lose their first game? They're going to batter us today. I've played saves on FM15 before where this guy, Matty Dunn, on the, he, I mean, he's scored 30 goals a season in saves I've been in before. Again, he's a left winger coming in from the right, exactly like I'd love to have him on my right wing at the moment. Billy Sharp will score goals for fun in this division. Jose Baxter as well. Paul Coots, ex posh player. Yeah, they're going to destroy us today. If we can even come out of this with a draw, I will be a happy camper. Um, right, we'll get our. Opposition instructions from Strachan. And, yeah, let's just yeah pick up where we left off. We'll be happy scraping a draw. We'll be happy not being embarrassed in this game. So let's see how we get on. Um, I'm still not happy with Taylor being out on it. I need to get him on the left-hand side, I think. That's where he got his goal from against Dagenham and Redbridge in midweek, coming in off that left wing and hitting it right-footed, exactly like Matty Dunn is probably going to do for Sheffield United in a minute. And hopefully how Forrest is about to do now. Oh, I see. Just, it was a tight angle for him. That was the disadvantage of him being right-footed. If that, that was the sort of thing where ideally you'd want to put it across the goal on your left foot. But what can we do? Can't get many naturally two-footed players in League One, unfortunately. Um, right. We're, we're, all re about, uh, we're doing all right for possession. Only five minutes in. We already seem to be... Getting a hold of the game. We just we can't be letting him have that ball there. Um, go on. Hey, Leanne Goll again. Two goals in two games. For a player who my assistant manager tells me isn't any good. I need to sack the assistant, I think. Because this lad is a teenager. He's only in his second game in league football. And that is a pretty nice finish. A lot of pressure on him playing as a lone striker. And that, it's ridiculous that we're ahead against that Sheffield United team. Can we have the full-time whistle now, please? Uh, see, they just... Any time we have the ball in our own half, they just seem to be outnumbering us and overwhelming us. They've certainly sorted out that possession thing. We're only 10 minutes in and they're already at 60% possession now. Their quality and experience is starting to show through. We just need to try and hang on and snatch, a, snatch another goal, maybe, and then run away. That's, that's a good place to win the ball back, though. Oh, go on, Forrester. I'm a little bit worried about how inexperienced my back four is. Alex Davey barely played any league football before. I think he had a little bit of time at Chesterfield. Was it Chesterfield on loan from Chelsea last season? Um, Derby's have only played one season before, I think. Oh, there you go. John Taylor's got three and three. He's making it really hard for me to find a way to fit Marcus Madison into this team. And that is a lovely bit of skill. He's beaten two players there before sliding that in. That'll do nicely. If he does that every week, I'm going to have to find a way to squeeze a fourth attacking player in to make room for Madison. All right. I could probably live with there being no more highlights from here on in. 2-0 up away to Sheffield United is ridiculous. 
certainly far better than we could have ever hoped for. That needs to get out of the way. Oh, Taylor could have made it 3-0 there. And we really would be robbing him then because they're still beating us for possession. Although we have had three clear-cut chances. And only put two of them away. They're matching us pass for pass though. Which shows that they are a pretty good team because the only team in any of the games, friendlies or otherwise we've played so far have met us pass for pass for Arsenal. So... <laughs> that shows that this Sheffield United team is far too good to lose their first two games of the season. They'll be there or thereabouts by the end of the season. Yes, happy with that so far. Let's just try not to lose our heads in this second half. Come on. Have they mixed things up slightly? I don't think Dunn had taken any of the kickoffs before. Now I wonder if they've switch their formation around a little bit if I was a proper pro I'd probably check that it looks like they're lining up with a 4-4-2 now, they've put Matty Dunn up front with Billy Sharp I think which is equally as terrifying, I didn't like him out on that right wing but I really don't want him up against our inexperienced back four like that the two of them together that's a 50 goal a season partnership at this level that we could really do with not having against a Young centre back like Alex Davy, and two young, inexperienced. Well, Dalby's not a young fullback; he's just new. Oh no, John Taylor's injured, and now Dunn's going to really rub it in. Oh, how have we kept that out? Right, we need to get Taylor off. Oh, see that—that's the sort of thing that can ruin a good start to a season. Losing them, this guy's been the star man so far. Although. At least it's the one position where we've got some strength in depth and a ready-made replacement because Marcus Madison with his free assist in midweek should hopefully be able to just slot in and pick up where Taylor's left off. But I hope Taylor's not going to be out for any length of time because he's where the goals are coming from at the moment. Everything's coming through him and he's scoring a lot. Right, well, there's 20 minutes to go. Need to be thinking about another sub really, but I think I might bring off one of, I'm not sure either Anderson or Doyle, they're both on a yellow card and they're both struggling a little bit um, I think it needs to be, have I got two, I've only got one midfielder to bring on I guess we go with fitness they're both on 6.7, I could experience tells me to bring Anderson off but then Doyle's struggling more than Anderson is so let's switch Anderson over to the defensive side and put Gardner over there and then we'll leave it as that because we don't want to be down to 10 men against Sheffield United. I'll save that last sub for the last five minutes or so, which hopefully will fly by with no more highlights. It's all Sheffield United now. Possession's pretty much evened out, but it's just every highlight seems to be Sheffield United doing something. It would be lovely to get a third goal at this point. Oh, come on, just get the ball out of our half. A highlight with us in their half with the ball would be nice. How have they got a player like... Is that Connor Salmon they've brought on now? Another League One football manager legend. There you go. His third goal of the season already. Why was he even on the bench for him? We are in trouble now. 20 minutes still to go. And it's been all Sheffield United. And now they've got another top quality League One striker on. They've got too much money and too many good players. We just need to try and see this out now. Into the last 10 minutes or so. It feels like it might be time to make a substitution. I think I'm going to bring Michael Smith on at left back maybe. He's capable of playing there. And Adam Chickson seems to be struggling a little bit. If I'd have known he was going to be playing today, I wouldn't have kept him on for the full match against Dagenham. So we'll stick Smith on just for some fresh legs at left back. Because we don't need someone who's tired in an already inexperienced back four. It's not ideal to have the right back out there on the left hand side, but it's better than an exhausted youngster, I guess. And now we really just do need to hold on. Just get yeah, so it, keep the ball in their half. Oh, Connor Washington. That'll do nicely. That's his second of the season. That's put us top of the league. If we can just hold on for these last five minutes or so. That is a lovely little finish. And that's the advantage of having that 
second striker withdrawn into the attacking midfielder role because no one was picking him up. He's just hovering around between the penalty spot and the edge of the penalty area and no one's picking him up at all and that was just set up beautifully for him. Right. I don't like the fact we're still getting so many highlights. I just I, I want the game to be over now. Because there's no way we're going to score again. The only thing that's going to happen now is they're going to score. We're we're dead on our feet. Oh, and that's insane. Leon goal again. <laughs> um, this is um, this is a good start to the season. This was not expected. And this is a teenager and his second goal in the football, second game in the football league, or his third goal in two games. And he's just rounded a keeper away from home at Sheffield United. This is not how every one of my videos is going to be. Do not expect performances like this every game. And the, that's 5-1. This is getting silly now because the really silly thing is Sheffield United have still had more of the possession. Yeah, we've created a lot of chances, but we don't look like a... We haven't looked like a five goals away from home team, but that's what we've ended up doing. And this is this is silly now. I might have to live live come every match if this is what it does. This has been what twelve goals in our first three games, and I was worried about needing a striker. Perhaps promotion isn't going to be as ridiculous as I initially thought it would be. Um, so there we go, top of the league. Two games in. Um, I'm going to play the next few games offline. I'll be back tomorrow with that Everton um, Capital One Cup now, is it called? Um, where we'll, you'll finally see us get stuffed because we're not going to beat Everton. Um, and then um, we'll pick things up from there with that Millwall game. will be the next live comp game after Everton, which is already looking like a bit of a top of the lead, top of the table clash. So, um, yeah, keep your, keep your likes and comments coming in. They're very much appreciated. And obviously, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, a subscribe would be very much appreciated. Cheers.